Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ryan from Performabilt, and today we are going to do the fill procedure video. Now, before we get into all that and things get loud, because mind you, this is a hot rod. It was made out of a lot of spare parts, and it's a little, a little wild. Um, I'm going to crack some myths from the start and give you a general overview of what, uh, you know, help you wade through the uh, misinformation and and uh, sheer ignorance of the internet nowadays. It's just plain awful and it depresses me. But don't worry, I'm here. So take this for what it is, uh, keep an open mind, and hopefully what I say makes sense. Um, as you know, I'm pretty good at breaking things down in layman's terms and keeping it easy because transmissions are complicated, but it doesn't have to be. They're not so bad, especially on the customer end. Mind you, myself, along with many other companies, we do what we do and we build you a pretty bad ass strong unit, okay? It can take some mistakes. These are tough. However, a lot of responsibility is in your book and fortunately, you only have to deal with it a couple times where I gotta deal with it every day in thousands of pieces to make sure this thing works. One of those things and probably the single most important next to changing the filter when you service it is filling it upright. Now, myth number one, okay, I get this a lot. Um, everybody thinks ASE means something. Uh, it, it really doesn't. It just means you know how to take a test. But typically the response I get is, I'm ASE and GM says nine quarts in my 72 Nova or whatever. Uh, I guess that's a bad example. GM says, and I'm ASE, that my 2000 Camaro takes 9.5 quarts. That was true before you touched it. Okay? The moment you slap a 6 liter and a deeper pan on it and, you know, change all this other stuff, okay. Just going back to transmission modification, 2,000 Camaros, just as an example, this applies to Silverados and everything else, everybody's hot rodding nowadays, 2,000 Camaros, namely F-bodies, usually had a shallow pan, okay? And GM has put in place a certain amount of line length and a certain transmission cooler in the radiator and a certain size torque converter. I believe it's 12 inches it may be 11 um, I'm not sure it doesn't it's not that big of a difference um, their fill procedure was mathematically factored out to keep it easy for the factory workers service technicians that way they could do it efficiently fast millions of vehicles get it out on to the next one the moment you play hot rod, which we're all doing, and if you tell me you're not, you're lying to me. We're all addicts. We change parts left and right constantly. This thing's gone through like four, three or four variations between motors and transmissions and lines and everything else. Things have changed, okay? And you need to really think about that. I know a lot of guys have their cars built. That's fine. For the guys that have built your own car, you should probably know quite a bit about it. For the guys that have had their car built, it really pays to know a little bit about what you're driving. That way a lot of companies where you're seeking aftermarket parts can help you, you know, without doing research for you. And, and we might answer you a few days later that we do it anyway, but it's, it would save everybody a lot of time just to know what you have. So in this instance, 2000 Camaro had that, okay? The moment you start modifying things, putting in a smaller converter, a bigger cooler, more or less line, whichever way you're going to go, and a deeper pan, you can go real deep if you want. Things have changed. Quartz have changed. No set number anymore. It's up to you to use your brains a little bit and check your stick, okay? Put in a little labor of love into your hot rod. Great example, 1952. This thing did not have a 454 or a 4060 in it when GM came out with it. It just didn't. Um, things have changed for me. 
Uh, I've had this running and through several variations over the course of the time I've owned it and built it. It used to have a 700, now it's a 60. Not a huge change, but a little. In the past, I've put 10 quarts into it, and that's what it took, okay? That's with my setup, which we're running the cooler that we give you for free. We're running a 12, no, 11 inch torque converter in here, uh, LT based, and um, a level 34L60E, which I have converted to from a level 2 700R4 because it felt like it. And about um, maybe 12 feet of line between the two overall. That's just an estimate. Things have changed. I typically take about 10 quarts in this vehicle, and I had to do that math. Um, my uh, co-worker here, Frank, who I'm sure you guys have had the pleasure of speaking with, he has a 95 Impala SS. Uh, he's running a level 3 4L60E, 9.5 inch triple disc billet torque converter, and a cooler, just like we send. He takes a, almost exactly, I think he said, uh, 9 to 9.5 quarts. I forget which number, but as you can see, we're either a half to a quart off of being over full between the two builds. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Usually, no two setups are exactly the same. I mean, you'll be close, but close doesn't cut it with transmissions. These are very sensitive with fluid, and they're even more sensitive with the filter. So, that's myth number one. Forget ASC. There is no set number. Do your math, figure out what you have, and check your stick while you're filling it. Myth number two. Uh, not a myth, but number two. Something that people tend to forget. Um, when you got this thing filled up for the most part, or are filling it up, you need to run it through all the gears. Uh, that's 1, 2, 3, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, D, neutral, reverse, and park. Um, reverse and lockup. Reverse, though, is something a lot of people forget about, and that is the biggest sole circuit in the transmission. They'll run it through the forward gears, drop the truck, and go. No, because as soon as you hit reverse to back the driveway out, those components have just filled up, with all that fluid you thought was there and the pans actually super low because reverse is a very big circuit um, reverse is the pretty much entire servo assembly applied for the band the clutch is in the reverse input drum which is a very large piston and the low reverse clutches in the very back of the case which is a huge piston it's about the size of your average cereal bowl um, that's a lot of fluid when I put them in reverse on the dyno when we're testing them um, for you initially, reverse will suck the pan dry when it's full. That's how big this is. So don't forget reverse. Don't be so excited about your hot rod that you forget the essentials that'll ruin your day later. The other thing is lockup. Uh, please hit lockup when you're filling it up. Lockup is also a pretty decent sized circuit and a particular circuit that won't fill with all the other gears unless it's engaged, i.e. some valve work in the pump and in the valve body. Um, that will drain some fluid as well. So all the gears, everything the shifter does, I can't say it any plainer, uh, it really matters. Have your vehicle up on jack stands, it's really easy and it makes filling a breeze. It also lets you like you don't have to be in a hurry to do this, okay? Because I'll explain the fill procedure and hopefully that makes sense. But starting to fill this thing up, you will have time, okay? Because before you installed it, you should have put a quart in the torque converter to start with. That takes a while, just be patient, but it's worth it. Helps prime the whole system, gets everything kind of going. So we do our math. We have a, tor a quart in the torque converter. We are expecting, this is everybody, not just me. We are expecting anywhere from 9 to 14 quarts. It doesn't matter what vehicle you have or your setup. Um, if you have changed anything, or even if it's bone stock and you've bought a transmission or somebody else's, 
expect 9 to 14. There is no set number and you have to check your stick. It's better to have a case of fluid than only a few quarts and run out midway through the fill-up. Um, so a quart in the torque converter, we have a case of fluid. You're going to, before you even get going, fill up six quarts in the pan, five to six, mind you. Keep that math in your head. One quart plus six is seven. We're almost there, okay? We're almost to the minimum. No transmissions, no 4L60E. And this is, mind you, this is all 4L60E that we're dealing with. 700R4 applies exactly as well. Um, you, this also kind of applies to the 4L80, but the 4L80 uses much more fluid because it's a lot bigger. Um, but a general guideline, this is great for that too because you're going to follow the same thing. You know, first, second, third, all the gears, factor your setup, figure it out. So use this video for that as well. But for now, quart in the converter, we'll say six quarts in the pan, just for sake of math. That's seven. The minimum's nine. So we're almost there. At six quarts, we fire the truck up, okay? We immediately add two more quarts. That gives us nine. That's the minimum. Now we run it through all the gears several times and then we stop, don't shut it off, I mean, I didn't mean stop, but we come out, we check the stick, see where, they're, see where we're at. You could be two quarts off to four quarts off. This is where, you know, just fill it up to where your stick has been measured by you. When you put this in, you need to drop the pan and check your stick. I have a Fitzall uh, dipstick, and surprisingly, it was actually spot on, so my stick actually is stock from the aftermarket manufacturer but mark your stick at the gasket area on the pan rail your hot full mark it should be at or damn near the gasket take a pocket knife a dremel put your own hash mark on it but that's your hot full from now on um, you need to do that because gm was notorious for having a quart or two short um, that's quite a bit of fluid when you're talking especially when you're dealing with high performance stuff that's very demanding so we have the minimum now, nine quarts in, we have a quart in the converter, six quarts in the pan, we've started it up, we've ran it through the gears, and immediately filled two more quarts prior to running through the gears. Now we've checked our stick, we may add, need to add more. We probably will have to add more, and that's 99% of everybody. Um, and that's basically the fill procedure, which I'm gonna go through live here in a second, but you can see I'm not going to be really running around nuts or anything. It actually should be pretty relaxing. Uh, mind you, just a forewarning, this thing's carbureted. It hasn't been started in two months, so it may not want to start as quick as it should. Um, but we'll get it going. Myth number three, fluid. Fluid does not matter, um, especially with the 4L60. Mind you, I'm sure, you know, some import transmissions actually it does matter but when you're dealing with domestic especially GM typically uh, anything DEX 3 or better that is good quality okay I can't say that plainer um, if you're an Amsoil guy great go ahead but me personally I've used this cheap Starfire synthetic uh, synthetic blend I guess multi-purpose ATF DEX 3 based in every vehicle my entire life and it has always been pink and it has always worked so good and it saved me a buttload of money because frankly this particular transmission and even the 4L80 doesn't really give a shit <laughs> about what fluid it's not gonna make or break your unit um, what these care about is an on-time service and the filter change the filter change matters more than your fluid, okay? I can't stress that enough. So when you service this thing, after a thousand miles to get all that clutch fuzz out of the system, which is stuff you can't really see, but it's actually so fine, it is stopping up your filter. We have you do that. There is no break-in. You don't have to drive it 5,000 miles nice and easy. That's totally made up throughout the industry and it's complete bullshit, okay? With a Performa built, you fill it up, you go do a burnout. 
straight up. But don't forget about the thousand mile initial service, okay? Just change the filter for me. It, it's really easy. And we use a deep pan in every unit, not a shallow. So if AutoZone gives you, and I have a video on this too uh, previously, Ryan breaks down the basics on automatics, if available on our YouTube. If they give you a thin filter with a metal top, that's a shallow. You're going to burn your unit up instantaneously. Our unit uses a deep OEM filter, as do most vehicles with the 4L60. It is black plastic, and it's about an inch thick. Take it back if it's not black plastic, and it's an inch thick. I'm just trying to save you the hassle of pulling this out, which nobody likes to do. Um, so, whatever fluid. After that, I tell people, just change it once a year. That way you don't forget. Um, if you're really good at it, sure. Do what you want, use your judgment, I trust you. Uh, but if you're bad at it, or you're like me, that have multiple vehicles, and I have a lot going on in my head, I do it at the beginning of every winter, or at the end of every season. I just do all the vehicles. That way it's done, don't have to worry about it, I know I'm good. Best advice I could give you. So, fluid doesn't matter, doesn't care, 4L60E, 4L80, they do not give a shit if you buy Royal, Pur Royal Purple. It will do the literal same job as Starfire or any other lower priced fluid. Um, it's just oil with detergents and it is hydraulic oil and that's all it does. It, it doesn't really help cool. It doesn't really help lubricate enough to matter. Um, especially since near, damn near everything's rollerized in this thing. Uh, I guess we'll move on to that. I believe it's time. Yeah, as you know, turning the key for the first time after a big project makes everybody a little nervous. So I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a little nervous. I'm really hoping I got the programming on the controller right and it does what it's supposed to do. It's gonna be loud. I will be shouting out um, what I'm doing or trying to. But for the record, it's just what we talked about before. And to run through it again, one quart in the, sorry, getting ahead of myself. To run through it again, you will expect nine to 14 quarts. There is no set number. You will check your stick periodically. And to start it off before install, we filled it up one quart with the converter, filled it up six quarts in the pan before starting it, started it, two more quarts immediately. That's nine, the minimum. After that, we're adding as our setup requires, okay, up to 14 quarts. I've rarely had a vehicle take more than 14. And then after the fill up, we've run it, ran it through the gears, verified our sticks full. We let the truck set or the, whatever vehicle you're using set for at least a few hours. And all this does is it lets the air burp out of the system on the initial fill up. You know, you don't want spongy hydraulics, you want rock solid ones. Sponginess and air bubbles create um, half assed applied clutches. You don't want that. So, let's get started. I have this particular situation, I have nothing in the pan. Okay, all this unit's been is dyno tested. There probably is one quart of residual dyno fluid in it, but that's it. There is one quart in the converter prior to install. So I'm going to add my six quarts now. And it really will save you some aggravation just to have all the caps open and off. rush this isn't it is sensitive but it isn't as sensitive as you might think you can take your time with this because these six quarts will overall prevent anything bad from happening internally so you can meander out of the truck when you're done starting it add two more 
then start running it through, and nothing bad's gonna happen to you. Unless you put it in messed up and broke the pump, then you know all you're gonna get in is six quarts because it won't pump any fluid. Okay. Three. Five quarts, this is number six. Once I get this in, we'll go fight with it to start it. Guys, we'll see a teeny bit of smoke because I had a couple dribbles on my headers, but no big deal. All right, let's fire it up and see.
the full mark. So that's it. I'm gonna let this sit. And go have fun on this beautiful day. And clean up my gigantic oil spill, because I'm an idiot. This is Ryan from Performa Built. Have fun hot rodding.